The concept of Burn Trap has been annoying me since I first learned of his existence. Since it seemingly exists separate from Glitch Trap. Up until this point, we were running under the assumption that William's body finally ate it in the FNAF 6 fire, but that his soul ended up latching onto a hard drive that got scanned into Help Wanted, which is how Glitch Trap was born. Because William was able to use the agony from the fire to keep on living and finally become a spirit, something like that. But with some of William's body still being in the suit, what the hell? What is going on here? That's what we're exploring and aim to answer today. And you know what? I think I did. The main issue I've been having is whether William is dead or alive. And there are a couple different things to consider here. Firstly, he is seemingly in a new endoskeleton, which would indicate that he's dead and Glitch Trap's consciousness is just being transferred into Burn Trap spot via the recharge station. But his head is clearly visible. Like, you can see his skull and his actual human jaw, meaning that he could still be holding on to this world via that head, especially given who we're talking about here. The most stubborn to ever grace our screens. This also can't be a new endo. And just the model that they're using for the others since it was easier and they could release the game faster. This seems to be indicated by the way that Burn Trap walks. If this was a new endoskeleton, why would he be shambling like a zombie? But the claws and repaired sections to the actual endo also seem to indicate that this is also a new endo and possibly even Glamrock Bonnies. So there's a whole lot of wrong going on here. There, all the points are intersecting and it's not fun. Originally, I was against the whole Glamrock body endoskeleton thing because, well, frankly, the body in the suit kind of disproved it for me, but I think I might have found a way to make it work. However, looking at the model, I'm still not 100% sure. If this was the Glamrock body endo, it would need to have broader shoulders and actually be shorter. Like, even scaling the Glamrock endo so that they're the same height, the endos, when posed the same and lined up, just, they don't match. There are similarities, of course, between the two designs, but there aren't enough similarities where I can call this even really above 50%. There's also the issue of the muscles being woven throughout the body, or maybe those are nerve fibers. If it was just the head, I'd understand, since they could have just pulled the old endo head and put it onto the new body, since all the parts were intertwined, Afton's head would have come with it. But with the muscles throughout the rest of the endo, that's way too intricate to actually have been placed there. And they would only be there and not dangling if it had been stuck there after being shoved full of machine parts. I don't think that they're taking super Super glue to glue these fibers back onto a new endoskeleton. If Afton was going to transfer his head to a new endo, it wouldn't come with the rest of his body bits. It just, it wouldn't. That's not how it works. Which would mean this would have to be Springtrap's endoskeleton. Which also explains why it's so run down, why he shambles, and why he hardly has any casing. And Springtrap's design also seems to change from game to game. From FNAF 3 to FNAF 6, he was totally different. So him changing again in Security Breach seems like no big deal in comparison. It's basically normal for him to get a newer and seemingly scarier attempt at his design with a new game. And at least this has an understandable progression from the last game and even from FNAF 3 since it's more run down and not just a bigger head like Scrap Trap. It's like he sold his soul for a bigger head and then the demon kind of made a joke out of it. The most reasonable assumption that I have for what happened though was that he was given the hands of Glamrock Bonnie since it has the claws and just he wasn't given the entire endoskeleton. But then again, his arms have have the bits of muscle and nerve fibers as well, which means that it would have to have been his old one, it would have to have been there from the start, it would have to be the arm of the old endoskeleton, which is a whole other conundrum, because Scrap Trap was missing an arm, and Spring Trap didn't have any casing on his foot, yet here we are. I just think that we have to kind of leave this one up to artistic license, and accept that it's meant to be the same endoskeleton, just with a replacement part or two from Glamrock Bonnie, instead of like the entire endoskeleton. It makes sense, honestly, and it's really the only reasonable explanation that we have. Unless the colors are wrong on the images that I was looking at and the bits on the hands are just meant to be melted casing, which is possible, but I, I, I doubt it. As for if he's wanted dead or alive, I think this version of Afton is actually finally dead. And honestly, I'm happy about that because it means that even if he's still here, we can kill him off for good. This is the most logical conclusion to me because, well, other than him basically being only a head, this guy has had multiple backslides of, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Just kidding. And this time around, while we instantly predicted that he had indeed survived, I think that Scott is finally flipping the narrative on us. We predicted it, so it's not gonna happen. Afton is no longer connected to his body, as we can clearly see from the 
the formation of Glitch Trap. And Glitch Trap being created would only be possible if Afton died, since the one you should not have killed was dead set on keeping him breathing. But Bird Trap, this guy doesn't even have lungs anymore. So yeah, this version of Afton's body is dead, but his consciousness lives on. Like how there's like the conspiracy that Walt Disney froze his head. Yeah, well, that's kind of what they did with Glitch Trap. And then that programming was probably uploaded into his old host or I guess vessel since I've been rewatching Supernatural. Basically, this guy would be impossible if he wasn't just Afton's code loaded onto an endoskeleton. Plus, the eyes are clearly robotic this time around with purple pupils rather than the previous iterations that had seemingly real eyes, Afton's actual eyes, since it was in suit mode after he got snapped. And opening his head in those like secret FNAF three screens revealed that it was actually like his eyes because they were seemingly in the same place. So, all in all, here's the story of Burn Trap as far as I can tell. During the FNAF 6 fire, Afton passes out. Not dead, but still somehow alive thanks to the one you should not have killed, Crying Child. This leads to the events of Ultimate Custom Night that sees Afton stuck in his own mind trying to escape so that his spirit can move on. But Crying Child, represented by a golden bear like the one who crushed his skull, tries to keep him stuck. Until eventually, he throws everything Thing that he has at him. 50-20 mode. After being so weakened by the fire, William survives this attack on his mind, and Crying Child's spirit is set free, hence the spasming bear at the end of that mode. That's him burning as the fire sets his soul free. William's soul then latches onto the nearest thing that it can find, one of the hard drives in the storage room that the Scrap Trap animatronic was being kept in. One that gets scanned to create the Freddy Fazbear virtual experience as the company tries to rebuild its reputation. Then, not wanting to waste the land that was bought for their company, Fazbear Entertainment begins building a new pizza plex on top of their old location. Whether this is due to Glitch Trap possessing someone higher up at the company through the game or someone just wanting to save money is up in the air, but the remains of the FNAF 6 simulated pizzeria are buried under the pizza plex's foundation. That's when Vanessa comes along, our player character from Help Wanted, who reassembles the 16 cassette tapes in an effort to destroy Afton once and for all, but ultimately fails. When our mind is distracted by following Tape Girl's instructions, William locks us in our mind and in the Princess Quest minigame that would later get ported to an arcade cabinet for insurance purposes. And by insurance, I mean like insurance on Vanessa so that she wouldn't easily be able to escape. As Vanny, William then uses the animatronics to dig out his body and put his old endoskeleton in a recharge station so that when he's able to transfer himself back into it, he'll be able to move. After all, at this point, he's not a spirit, but simply coding, which means that that in another game, if he is still alive, we'll actually be able to kill him off. He also gives his old suit some upgrades in the form of Glamrock Bonnie's hands and right foot. Why would he not go with a new, more powerful endo, you ask? Because it's William and his Spring Bonnie suit. It's his body in there. Of course he'd want it back. He's been that way for, like, at least 40 years at this point. It's all he knows. Then, as Gregory and Freddy jump down into the pit, William can sense it. Either because he's an animatronic, because one or both of them are meant to be his kids or something else, he activates his body even though it's not fully charged and tries to take over Freddy. He's not fully charged, hence the shambling. Which Gregory ends up preventing with fire, which has surely traumatized Afton by now, and considering how he's only code, this time fire would actually finish the job. Eventually, the place actually catches on fire and Freddy and Gregory escape. But the blob grabs hold of William. Whether it was to save him or seal his fate is unknown, but this also almost certainly isn't the end of William Afton's story. That's all the time we have for today, friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been in Shower Mank on a Monroe, and I'll see you in another video.